Good morning and welcome to Living Local 15. Thank you so much for tuning in today. First up, I am taking you inside of Invents Nail Spa to discuss their new products and services and also chat with some employees. Then Dasani joins me in studio to share about their upcoming Buddy Walk, which is an event to promote acceptance for those with Down syndrome. Then it's Money Monday with Foster Financial, and we discuss how to turn on your Social Security benefits. That and more happening now. Fashion, food, and fun. You're watching Living Local 15 with your host, Jessica Williams. This segment sponsored by Invents Nail Spa. I'm at Invents Nail Spa located at Jefferson Point. They offer luxury nail treatments, pedicures, and so much more. Today, I'm gonna to learn about their innovative products and also their client services. Let's do it. I am back at Invents Nail Spa to learn about some of the new options they have to offer. And joining me is store manager, Lam Nguyen. Hello. Hi. All right, so you are always adding new things to the menu to make the experience really great for people. Yes. So talk to me about your new luxury drinks. Yeah, sure. Um, now we beside the uh, dry sweet uh, sparkling wine, slushy wine and beer. Mm -hmm. And I have asked uh, some new item into our menus here, which is uh, strawberry margarita. Mm -hmm. It's a wine base. Yeah. So it's super delicious. I have a lot of people tried it and they love it. That's yeah. why I add it on our menu. Mm -hmm. And also our lime margarita, it's a wine base as well. Uh -huh. And beside that, we have one, it's the crazy thing, the import from Korea, which is they call it shoju. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they always drink it at their party in Korea. I don't yeah. know if you tried it, but <laughs> you got to come to Envin to try it. Yeah, so unique and different, which I love. And of course, like you said, you offer already wines, red wine, white yeah. wine, yeah. sparkling, Prosecco, and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and then you have your slushies and you have beer. Right. But this is an elevated experience. I'm even looking at these glasses with the gold rim. I mean, and it's glass. And so people can actually feel very feel luxurious exactly. when they're here. Okay, so in addition to being able to have a really great beverage, which by the way, you actually do give a free glass of wine out if someone is celebrating an yes. event, like their birthday. Exactly. Their birthday, the uh, wedding party, you know, like if they, if they come in a party of more than six, they can have free one. Yeah, that's great. And if they order one of your luxury spa pedicures, pedicure yes. treatments, they come with a pedicure. They come it with comes a glass with of wine. It. Yes. So I'm looking at this setup that you have up here. So talk to me about what really makes this deluxe pedicure different from your regular pedicures. Yeah, of course. Um, it's one of the best thing about it is about a massage. Mm. It's a come with the longest massage, mm -hmm. and it's also um, it's come with the organic products, mm -hmm. and it's come it's also come with cotton and glove, mm -hmm. eye mask, eye steam eye mask, mm -hmm. and also it come with uh, hot stone massage, mm -hmm. pep and wax, like add on top of it, like it take up to more than hour and a half for a pedicure. Yeah, so. and which people want that relaxation exactly. to be able to come in and just breathe a little bit. Um, music's playing, got the TV on and people can just chat and just have a good time. Yeah, yeah. And so um, in addition to that, you roll out different products that Invents offers and over there you have your um, oils and your lotions yes. and what else do you offer here product wise? Yeah, we do have like a uh, recommend oil products, hair products like shampoo, uh, blonde products, hairs and it's a lot of a lot more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, it was fun learning about the new items. Now I want to talk to some of your employees and just people that are getting services sure. to see what they think. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, 
I am now joined by Kirsten, who is a nail technician and esthetician. Hello. Hi, how are we doing? How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. Thank you guys for coming out, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm excited to learn more just from a different perspective. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been working here? So I've been at MVINS for almost two years. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's probably one of the best spas in town. Um, I haven't worked at any other. This was my first come, um, and I haven't left because I like it that much. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. incredible. So um, how long have you been an esthetician? Esthetician has only been for about six months. Mm -hmm. um, I'm opening that up a little bit. Um, I'm really excited to dive into that here because mm -hmm. um, I've been here for nails for quite a bit. But yeah, um, yeah I'm just hoping to get more more facials and waxes and mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. And so what is it like, um, the, the true difference? So you say it's just a different experience than yeah. any other place that you have gone. Why is that? Yeah, I think it's just the moment you walk through that door, um, whether it be as an employee or as a customer, um, I think the the way you're greeted and the way you're treated from start to finish is, is so important. Um, customer service, um, you know, fairness as an employee, the way that we have our breaks and how everyone's treated. Um, I think it just sets us apart from a lot of other businesses. Yeah, it feels like you're actually like human, not just um, a sale walking through the door. Yeah, um, that's a really good perspective. And yeah. so as you work with your different clients, I'm sure that you build up your own client base yeah. and you form those relationships. So from um, some of your clients, what do they kind of mention that they love a lot? Um, so I think for a lot of clients that come in here, it's more than just getting your nails done. It's an experience. You get to hear their story. You get to connect. You get to, you know, learn who they are and they become part of your story as well when they come back to you and you're you're constantly doing those people and posting those pictures and getting that clientele and word of mouth you know um, you get those loyal clients that come in and they refer their friends and that's the best way to get your clients yeah, yeah. well thank you for yeah, sharing yeah yeah of course yeah <laughs>I am now joined by Jennifer, who's been coming here for a year now. Yes, I have. Yes. yes I have. So tell me about your experience. What brings you back? I come back because of the quality, honestly, and the quickness. I have an appointment. They get me in right away, and they're sweet. Um, they don't get too impatient with me when I can't find a color <laughs> or decide. <laughs> they're, they're very patient with me. and I. I love, I have my favorite, so I always ask, it's actually a husband and wife team. She just had recently had a baby, and so now I'm using her husband, but he is great. So the quality is why I come yeah. back. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. a good experience to hear. And tell me about some of the services you like to get when you come. I get the pedicures, and that will vary. And then I like a dip done with mm -hmm. my nails. Yeah. And I'm just lazy and don't want to do it myself. <laughs> right, who does? <laughs> we all need some pampering, a little yes, relaxation. Yes, and I like that too. This is my relaxation time. Yeah. And there's certain things I will pay for, certain things I'm not spending the money on, mm -hmm. and I will definitely spend the money here. Yeah, it's important. Yes. Self-care is everything. It is, it is. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs>
1.2 mile walk actually included in the okay. day. Whereas my friends with Down syndrome, when they come off the walk, will be um, presented with a medal. Then oh. you come in back inside Parkview Field and there's the biggest dance party you've ever seen or been a part of. So yes. it's a very, very fun day. And more than anything, it is our only fundraiser of the year. It's okay. the one that sustains us from year to year. Right. Okay. And so it's at Parkview Field, like you yes. said. And so are the participants actually walking or are they cheering on those who are? The participants are actually walking. We okay. do a quick um, lap around the inside of Parkview mm -hmm. Field and then they leave the stadium where the city streets are surrounded by over this year, over a thousand volunteers who come out in force oh. to cheer on our walkers and the people walking with them. Wow. The community support we see from volunteers is absolutely mind blowing. So yeah. lots of Indiana Tech sports teams, PFW mm -hmm. sports teams, lots of um, employer groups, mm -hmm. um, a youth basketball program, a lot of great people that come out and cheer for our friends and cheer loudly. Yes, yes, which is so needed, which is great. Okay, so and each year you have a Grand Marshal, and that is you, Keegan, this year. Yep. Congratulations to you. And so, Keegan, can you tell me, what is this role? What will you do? Well, being a Grand Marshal is a big thing for everyone, like for me, because it's great. Everything money for Dasani and for the Bywalk this year, it's a big responsibility for everyone and for me. Yeah, it is a big responsibility, which is great. And so I understand that you will be leading the way, so you will be mm -hmm. leading the walk, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, great. And were you excited when you found out that you were the Grand Marshal this year? Yeah, I was happy and excited and it was just an amazing thing. Yeah, and how have you been preparing? I've been prepared ever since when I figured it out I was, and it's kind of amazing how I did it. Yeah, it is. That is so great. And so, Shelly, give me some more context to the um, Grand Marshal. Like, um, when when they're selected, what is the process like, or like, what is the position once they get there? Like, the Grand Marshal, they lead the way, right? They absolutely are in charge of the walk that day. Yeah. Keegan and his team of supporters will be asked to line up first at the start line mm -hmm. and they, he literally will haul, hold a sign that as it faces the rest of the walkers will say, follow me, I'm the Grand Marshal. Yeah. And um, people will get behind him and he'll lead the walk. He'll get to come up on stage during opening ceremonies and mm -hmm. say a few words to those assembled if he chooses to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's um, it's a very big honor. And Keegan's been a great representative for Dasani. I'm very proud of him yeah. and um, all of the great things he's doing as the Grand Marshal. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is awesome. And so um, how can people participate or get involved? I know that you said this is a fundraiser. So are there tickets that are involved? Um, we do not charge a fee to come to the Buddy Walk. Mm -hmm. We would ask that people go to Dasani.org and click the Buddy Walk tab and they can register on there because we do still like to kind of have a rough idea of how many people are going to come out. And there's also a donate button when you get okay. to that Buddy Walk site on our website if they choose to um, donate to the Buddy Walk. Any amount is greatly appreciated. It just allows us to continue to do the things that we do for our families. And we serve families in 11 counties in Northeast wow. Indiana. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And then of course, um, Dasani is um, your organization that's putting this on. Yes. And so I know that you all have things that you do throughout the year and ways yes. that you can support. So kind of give us an overview of your organization. One of our biggest initiatives is outreach to new and expectant parents. You know, as you might imagine, that um, can be an upsetting time sometimes yeah. for um, new parents who aren't sure what this path is going to look like. And part of what we do is reassure them that there is always a support system in place for them. We introduce them to other families who have a little more experience and it doesn't take long at all before they go I've got this, this is fine. Um, and then we also have different social groups for our friends with Down syndrome at different ages and stages. We have parents groups, um, grandparents groups. We do all family activities throughout the year because in our minds, the family is all part of this Down syndrome journey, not mm -hmm. only my friends with Down syndrome. Right. So um, we bring in a lot of nationally known speakers who are experts on all kinds of things that are pertinent to the Down syndrome community. Mm -hmm. So a lot goes on all yeah. through the year. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, but really wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you. So thank you, Shelly. Nice to meet you, Keegan. Congratulations again. Yeah, totally. Thanks. <laughs> 
And if you would like more information about the Dasani Buddy Walk, we'll have their website listed below, and I'll see you after the break. Living Local 15, proudly driven by the Kelly Automotive Group. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. It is time for Money Mondays, where we give you some really great financial information from one of our favorite financial advisors, Caleb Doan with Foster Financial. Hi, Caleb. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mondays, we're kicking it off with some very interesting information. And I think that this topic is a popular one, mm. Social Security. So what will you be sharing with us today? Yeah. So I, I think kind of a dilemma that a lot of people have when they retire is deciding when to turn on social security. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of times, you know, on these Mondays, we like to talk about how some of these tips affect women specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think one of these, these strategies that I'll talk about a little bit today is something that a lot of women should kind of understand before they decide when to turn on social security. Okay. And there's a specific rule within the social security system that I think people should be aware of that will ultimately impact when they should turn it on. Okay. And that rule is if a spouse, you know, if, if two spouses have differing levels of social security benefits, which is almost always the case, um, typically the, the breadwinner is the one who has the higher social security benefit. Mm -hmm. If that person passes away, uh, later on in retirement, the surviving spouse's benefit increases to what their deceased spouse had. Huh. So they kind of, you know, in a sense, take over their spouse's social security mm -hmm. and then lose their own. Mm -hmm. the, the IRS kind of puts it in, in different language. They basically say that, you know, your benefit just gets increased to what they had before. Yeah. But that should impact our decision of when to turn on Social Security. Mm. So, of course, with Social Security, you can turn it on as early as age 62 mm -hmm. or as late as age 70. Okay. And every year that you delay turning on Social Security, they tell you that your benefit is going to increase. Right. Um, and it increases by, by kind of a substantial amount. It's about 8% every single year, kind of mm -hmm. varies a little bit. Um, but it's, it's a decent increase. And so, you know, let's say there's... You know, a husband and a wife, they're both 62 years old, they both just retired, and now they have this decision of, okay, do we turn on Social Security now? Do we both delay it? Does yeah. one of us turn it on, one of us delay it? Um, and so I think one strategy that, that we've looked at using in the past is delaying the benefit for the spouse who has the higher benefit. Mm. And so, you know, for, for the sake of argument, let's say the husband's benefit is $3,000 a month, the wife's is going to be $2,000 a mm -hmm. month. Since the husband's benefit is higher, that is the benefit that's going to continue on for both of their lives right. if one of them passes away. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if he passes away early, she's going to get his benefit for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And so if we want one of those Social Security benefits to increase the most, mm -hmm. it's the husband's, you know, yeah. because that's the one that's going to last for both of their lives. Okay, and just to kind of um, take a step back, so I know mm -hmm. that we discussed before just the fact that once you lock it in mm -hmm. at the age, your Social Security does not have an opportunity to increase. So if you're saying you can choose it between 62 and 70 years old, if you lock it in at that rate at 62, you cannot ever get the increased amount. So that's why it's important what you're saying about waiting those years. So if you wait until 65, then it could increase and bump up. So you're saying if both spouses start off at 62 and they're like, okay, we're retired, you think that the men's benefit will really increase like enough mm. where it's worth waiting. Is that what you're saying? So it, it all depends on a lot of factors. Yeah. I mean, including health and everything mm -hmm. like that, because, you know, as we've talked about before, if you delay social security, you know, typically you need to live to a certain age right. for that delay to have been worth it. Mm -hmm. But if they're in a situation where maybe they say, hey, we, we have some pensions, um, you know, we have some investment income, and we really just have this small gap that we need to fill. We only need to turn on one of our social securities. Mm -hmm. It likely makes sense to, to turn on the social security for the person who has the lower benefit mm -hmm. and delay it for the person who has the higher benefit. Because like you said, once you, you know, turn on that social security, that amount is locked in. It increases a little bit each year with cost of living adjustments, mm -hmm. but you know, you're giving up that roughly 8% increase by delaying it. So what if you have two spouses and 
the husband activates his social security, mm -hmm. the wife never does, and then the husband passes away and she's never activated her social security. Is that the same? It, it will automatically go to her or will that only happen once she activates hers? Oh, good, good question. So you're forced to turn on your social security at age 70 mm -hmm. because that's the, the latest that you can delay that mm -hmm. social security. Um, so eventually her social security would be turned on either way. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, she would still get the higher of the two benefits. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if, if hers, you know, let's say she's, she's 70 years old, it's going to turn on later that year. You know, his is, is whatever benefit, maybe he's a couple of years older and so his what has been on for a while. she's not at the required age? Let's say that she's mm. um, 60 and he passed away and he has social security activated. What happens to his social security? Oh yeah, yeah, so that's, that's a good question because we don't, we don't see this too often yeah. um, because a lot of times, you know, in that situation, the wife is still working, let's mm -hmm. say, and so all of that kind of plays a factor. Yeah. If she's still working at the time, a lot of times the social security benefits would be, you know, decreased so much that maybe her benefit she would have to wait until she actually retires to start collecting mm. her benefit. Because, you know, when you're collecting Social Security, for every $2 that you earn, your Social Security is decreased by $1. Mm. And so that's why, you know, you can turn on Social Security as early as age 62, mm -hmm. but a lot of times people are still working at yeah. 62, right? And so we really wouldn't even think about turning on Social Security until they retire. Because right. if you turn it on at, at 62 and you're mm -hmm. still working, making $50,000 a year, mm -hmm. your Social Security is probably going to be zero. Okay. And so it's like there are... Uh, just myriad of things that you have to kind of consider when you're going to turn on Social Security. And one of them is, hey, if, if we have these two benefits, one of them is higher, that one might be the best one to delay. Okay. Oh, this is good. Okay. We definitely have to dive deeper <laughs> yeah. into Social Security. There's so many questions, so many follow-ups. I know this conversation is going to continue. Thank you so much, Caleb. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. And if you would like more information about Foster Financial, we'll be sure to have their website and their phone number listed below so that you can get your complimentary consultation. And we'll be right back. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Go to the Living Local 15 page on Wayne.com for recipes from the show, to watch a segment again, and to get information on products and services featured on Living Local 15. Content segments during today's Living Local 15 were paid for by these sponsors.